Good morning, good morning, good morning. A.R. Hayes, Convict Stotts. It's bright and early. We're 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday morning. I should be snoozing away. We got back yesterday from our little trip. Wife had to go to work last night, so here I am. I'm still researching. I'm still working on content for the channel. And I realized, based off of some of the comments and the various things that I've had coming through my way over the last couple of days, that I need to quickly touch upon something that will help people better understand A, the classification process, and two, the custody levels when it comes to the penitentiary and how they house certain inmates. When an a person goes through the courts and is found guilty on felony charges and sentenced to prison time, DOC time, Department of Corrections. They have to go to an initial intake center, which works to classify them to meet the, the certain criteria of where they're going to be shipped to a prison complex. Now, Let's start with the very, very basics. There are different levels of custody for an inmate. There is what's called minimum. There is medium, maximum, supermax, and administrative. Now, within those, there's other realms that you can earn while you're in the penitentiary. And we'll go over those in a minute. But let's start. Minimum is the lowest custody, obviously. That's why they call it minimum. Minimum yards could be open yards, meaning they don't even have fences. They go out in the community and they work. And they also have camps where you have firefighters and other great jobs to help them establish their route into society because typically they're doing very short sentences uh, for most that I've heard or been on, I've actually never personally been on a minimum yard, but from those I do know, it in most cases is seven years or less, and you're allowed to be on a minimum yard as long as you meet the requirements of the risk and internal risk scores, and I'll go over those here in a minute as well. Now, Medium custody can range anything from a smaller felony crime, let's say like burglary or theft, all the way up to murder. Not first degree, you won't find any capital crimes on a medium yard. However, you will have murderers serving many of lifetime sentences on those yards. So it's quite the mixture on a medium yard. The higher yards considered to be closed custody or max security, uh, they're, they're like a high risk factor, are, again, your higher level crimes mixed with disciplinary issues that come from lower yards and have earned their way through bad actions within the system to earn their right onto a higher closed custody yard. Now, Closed custody yards are different from minimum and medium, which have more of an open setting where they get to go outside more often, they get rec time, they get to go to chow halls, they get to be out of their cell for library, education, work. Uh, there, there's a lot of programs on the mediums and the minimum yards. When you get into the more Close custody, higher yards, that's when you're going to be spending more of your time in your cell locked down. You still do come out of your cell, but most times when you exit out of your building, you're going in and out of metal detectors and you're being searched. And there's, it's just a lot more restrictive, far less actual ability on the commissary ordering to get certain things like CD players, CDs. So you're, you're more restricted on the higher yards. Now, you can get into what's deemed to be a supermax, which is where they house like death row or the segregated units. 
the criminal syndicates, the affiliated leaders, all the high, high ups. It's considered one of the highest levels that you can get in the penitentiary. You have very little when it comes to any type of movement out of your cell. You also have very little when it comes to property and other um uh, I guess just positives that you're able to get. You don't get as much library. You don't get to order things from, you know, what the other yards are able to get, like CDs and books and stuff of that nature. Much more confined and much uh, less privileged. Now, administrative is as high as you can go. This is deemed by the administration and the parole board of they're locking you down this is people that would be like in the highest of highest you just never come out of your cell death row is considered administrative and really any inmate that just can't even have any type of personal interaction or physical touch with anybody else because it's too risky and and too much of an issue so you definitely don't get a job on that high of a yard. Now, on all the other yards, even the closed custody yards, they do offer you jobs like trustees of the buildings and stuff of that nature, but it's not going to be like what you get on the minimum yards. Anybody like the Idaho 4 case uh, defendant or a Chris Watts or some of that nature will always start on a high custody yard you're going to be a closed custody inmate for the first several years of your sentence until you start earning your way down they do point systems it's a risk score uh, most states that i've been in do a risk score that is an internal risk score and an external risk score meaning what is it going to be like internally for you? Are you going to be a danger to other inmates? Are you going to be a danger to the staff? Are you going to be violent within the setting of the penitentiary? And then the external risk score is what have you done while you've been on the streets? And if you did and were able to earn parole, what type of risk would you be when you went back out on the streets? So that is how they determine when you go through your actual classification at the intake center. They look at your education levels. They look at your prior history on the streets. How many convictions do you have? What type of crimes have you committed? Um, have you been through counseling? Numerous different factors into that. Then they also look at your mental health situation. They look at your overall health. Then, I mean, it even gets more outside of that, and they they start looking at different patterns of how uh, through the time. Are you a reoffender? Is this a, a repeat offense that you're coming back to the penitentiary? Have you been there before? And if so, what were your actions on the yards prior to being there? And so much when you're going through the intake center, they it's not always about the same state because most times if you've already gone through that state's intake center they've already got you classified so when you're coming back on new charges they already know where they're going to put you the, the minute that you come walking through the doors to get sent off to a yard because you've already set a standard with your prior uh, history now if you come back in with a much more violent crime it's going to raise that score by one level so if you left as a medium you'll come back in on a much higher yard and then if you can if you were a minimum when you left you're going to come in as a medium now on the opposite side of that after you've been in the penitentiary for a certain amount of time, they take into consideration your work ethic at your job, your disciplinary history, so you can begin deducting points off of your score so that you can work your way down on levels of custody. A murderer cannot go lower than a medium yard unless... unless they have the right for parole and they've earned you know a, a deduction of enough points through their time 
that as they're approaching their parole date, they can get down to a minimum custody release style yard. Now, every state is different. Most states on the West Coast have a very harsh and hard classification level. Back East, they have different ways that they classify people so they do allow more inmates on the east coast from what i understand and from what i've seen when i have visited a couple of yards on exchange programs they do a lot for higher level inmates to be able to get themselves down to lower custody arts with more privileges it's harder to do that on the west coast now they have an in inmate pattern score and what that is when they start looking at that these are for inmates that are going to be released so death penalty inmates life without parole inmates and most even life with parole but they've got to do at least 25 years or so don't have to go through the inmate pattern score because it's not going to really affect them at all any other inmate all the way down to minimum inmates get assess an inmate pattern score which is what is your risk of reoffending when you are released to the streets are you going to be someone who learned your lesson and improve your life or are you really a risk and you're probably going to reoffend. Now, most of this is deemed when you're going through your parole hearing, they're going to look at this score on whether you've earned your parole or you haven't. So you could lose your early release and your good time if your inmate pattern score is too high. Now, you also get assessed within that score not only about whether you're going to reoffend when you hit the streets but what if you hit the streets will you reoffend with a violent crime now once you get this put on you your parole if you are eligible and given parole will be much higher of a level because now they've deemed you as a risk to reoffend with a violent nature and a lot of people would put up their hands and say well why are you letting them out to begin with well ladies and gentlemen people do get the opportunity to get paroled sometimes people like me serve 115 percent of their sentence but that doesn't mean i i was clear free and day i still came out on parole and i had to have a pattern score for them to assess what level of parole to put me on to that's your surveillance i, I mean are they going to be minimum surveillance on you where they only see you one time a month you come in you do a ua every couple of months and you just kind of work your job and go about your business or are you going to be wearing an ankle bracelet checking in four to five times you know a day and having to call them anytime you want to go to the grocery store i had to get permission pretty much anytime i even wanted to go to the bathroom ladies and gentlemen so i had to work my way down from a very high level of parole to get my privileges and then finally released from state parole even though i have other forms of parole for the lifetime they're not check-in paroles it's just if i were to ever commit another crime i'm automatically violated and i would serve more time on my original sentences now to answer a few questions and i'm, I'm going to read them here so that i make sure that i get these questions to where you know what the question is and then i will answer them are violent and non-violent criminals housed in different prisons or separate parts of the prison that's a great question it's hard to answer in this sense violent and nonviolent crimes can all be housed together on any yard you're on all based off of your actual classification level also if you earn disciplinary or you get yourself into trouble while serving your time you can go to a higher yard and be housed with said individuals now violent nonviolent criminals when they're mixed i mean it's doing time it doesn't mean anybody's at any more risk than anybody else you're in prison no matter where you're at a prison complex is 
numerous different security leveled yards in one place. They're in separate parts of the complex with different fencing, different guards, different regulations, but it's still the same complex. So let's take, for, ist for instance, Tucson, Arizona has a major complex on it that has everything from a minimum yard to a maximum, maximum security yard. They're just in different parts of the complex. However, on the maximum yard, you will have people with nonviolent crimes like burglary or theft. They got themselves in trouble while they were on the yard, earned disciplinary, their classification points went up, and they got reclassified to a higher yard. You will also have the higher custody violent yards or inmates earn their way down and be on the minimum yard. I've never seen a, a life t lifer on any minimum style yard that I've been on or on the complexes I've been on. Um, like I said, I've never made it to a minimum yard, but I have heard of manslaughter and things of that that do get down to the lower level yards. They just can't be outside the fences from what I understand. Uh, would someone who committed a violent crime while impaired be housed as someone who committed a violent crime while lucid? Yeah, they are. Um, that's not taken into consideration when you get to the penitentiary. It's taken into consideration at your sentencing. So if they sentence you to a lower level crime, there's a good chance your classification could actually be lowered. However, if you commit a violent crime either way, there's a good possibility you start on a medium yard at the minimum and higher, and it doesn't matter whether you were uh, impaired or in unimpaired. All it matters is what your sentencing guidelines were. So most people going through the court cases are looking for what's called mitigated factors, if you get enough of them, you can get your time down, meaning your sentence to less prison time, which will lower your classification points and possibly your classification level. Now, what would the impact be on that person based off of that? Nothing really on the penitentiary side of it. Um, and in inmates don't look at that at all either because, I mean, it, it is what it is. What your crime is is what your crime is, and it doesn't matter what state of mind you were in when you committed it. Now, how does an inmate see another inmate's paperwork when they hit a yard? Most of the time, to be honest with you, the, the inmate's paperwork when they're coming on a yard has already been shown to the higher level i would say speaking inmates for every race by the co's or the guards if that has not transpired on every yard i've ever been on it's called a paperwork check your paperwork has to be checked to make sure you are not a snitch you are not a pc case you're not a child molester you're not something of a you know a predator of women they look for that. that. That's what is not allowed on yards. And if that is deemed in your paperwork, you'll be immediately uh, sent on your way off the yard in a, a manner you don't want to be. So paperwork is mandatory. Uh, in all the states that I come from, you within your race will share your paperwork with the higher uh, speaking people of your race, they will determine pretty much, you know, how you how you stand on the yard. If if you come on the yard and you don't have any of the check boxes of the cannot be here boxes, then you'll be fine. You'll 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 begin doing your time and you'll learn the way to do time on that yard. Yes, you may be heart checked, you may be tested to see what you're about, but in pretty much every case, you're going to be able to walk on the yard and begin doing your time, and you'll have somebody help you with getting situated on the yard. So if I were to break it down, the best way to sum up, let's take someone like the Idaho 4 
defendant if he gets sentenced there's two options he'll obviously have he's going to either be death penalty which he will begin his time on the administrative level meaning uh he'll be on death row so it won't really even matter where you know he gets classified he's going to death row um if he gets life without parole then he will be deemed a general population inmate he may start in segregation which is considered a high level uh, close custody for the first certain amount of years typically it's five to seven years and you'll earn your way down once you've proven a you're not suicidal b uh you know you're you're capable of being housed in a general population without your life being at risk or are you putting somebody else's life at risk at that point you'll be able to come down to what's called a closed custody max yard where you will be able to go out to rack into the chow hall and you'll be able to mingle with other inmates not on a constant basis it's almost like the 23 and 1 when you're in a jail where you get 23 hours of lockdown one hour out but close custody you get probably two to three hours out per day walking to and from the chow hall going to the rec yard uh, and being able to do your your various things like a, a work assignment or even going to library or educational building some of that nature so um Hopefully I've explained a little bit about the custody levels for you. Someone like the Delphi murder would always be in a segregated yard because he um, had children involved in his crime. Chris Watts, if he had to have stayed in his original state that would have known about his crimes more so than the out-of-state that he was sent to, he probably would have had to stay in segregation if he's not in segregation at this point he may still be but you know i it it's a weird world in the penitentiary because you will have a pretty big mixture of where you'll have just some simple burglars or you know uh home break-ins that stole a couple of dollars but it was their second offense so they ended up getting three years in the penitentiary and then when they're in you know the penitentiary they get what's called disciplinary infractions and tickets and it raises their score and the next thing you know they're on yards with the big boys and the people that uh a little more violent a little more chaotic in life now don't forget as well as all of those classifications you do have the cdu unit which is the correctional detention unit and that's max security lockdown you are locked down 23 and 1 every single day and most days you're really locked down 24 hours because you only come out to wreck in cdu uh, maybe once or twice a week and you never come out to use the phone that's brought to your cell um once a week you get 10 minutes and then you're locked and cuffed to go in and out of the shower so cdu is a whole nother beast altogether it's not like any prison yard it it's just it's a disciplinary infraction unit um, that you're paying your dues for any infractions that you've committed on the on the yard i spent most of my time ladies and gentlemen in closed custody and then also some time in segregation because i didn't have a good disciplinary infraction history while i was locked up anything from just petty stupid stuff all the way up to a lot of fighting and and violent history in there so sadly i spent a lot of time in the the closed custody and the segregated units which cost me visitation it cost me phone calls it cost me a lot of privileges so i've definitely learned my lesson from that and i try to teach as many people do your own time don't pay attention to what everybody else tries to get you involved in because all they're going to do is use you abuse you and get you to take the downfall and the heat for anything that happens where if you just mind your own do your own and, and you know just walk walk normal on the yard but just keep your nose out of the business you, you know you're you're gonna have all your privileges throughout the entirety and you'll work your way to lower yards have better jobs make more money better commentary 
better everything. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit, answers a few questions. Um, it, it's it's hard to explain the classification world because you just never know. It's all based off of your risk worth. So if you're not well educated, you're not well spoken, you don't handle yourself well, and you've got some pretty heavy crimes, you're probably going to a very high level yard and you're not going to have any fun while you're there. So, everybody, another video down, a couple more to go. Convict Stotts, AR Hayes, classification, prison 